Welcome back guys and if this is your first time here welcome to my channel today we're going to do some quick Marvel snap tips and tricks so uh, let's just dive right into it the first thing we're going to talk about is understanding what pool size means in uh, Marvel snap or what the card pools are specifically so uh, in the game the game is divided up currently into three pools these pools will grow you know we'll get to a pool four and a pool five eventually but right now we have three card pools uh, you can see that this is all based on your level uh, so from level 18 to 214 there's going to be 46 total cards you're going to want to collect uh, they'll show up for you in random orders so the way you get them is not going to be the same as somebody else is going to get them so you may get a card that somebody else is really wanting and vice versa uh pool two as you can see is from 222 to 474 25 more cards and pool three 486 plus 74 cards and so on and so on so the way you're going to get cards uh is going to be a little bit different than someone else uh, and that's one of the cool things about the game uh, is when you're opening those cards you know it has that pack feel if you know what i'm talking about if you've been a card collector before uh, the second thing we need to talk about is uh, your rank versus your MMR, right? So your rank, here's my rank. Uh, I'm currently 45. I try lots of different decks, lots of different things. So my rank goes up and down all the time. Uh, but there is also an internal matchmaking rating. Uh, and there are actually four factors that determine uh, who you're going to face and it's not just based on rank, so you're not always gonna be playing gold players uh, if you're in gold, or silver, or even iron. Just It just depends on the four factors. So uh, those four factors are going to be uh, your collection size, right? Uh, how many cards you have in your collection, where you're at. My collection level right now is 674. That's a determining factor on who I'm gonna face. They're not gonna put me against folks that don't have the same number of option of cards that I have. Uh, the second thing is going to be ranked, like we just mentioned, right? Uh, if my rank is just way up there, uh, obviously my collection size is probably a little bit bigger as well. So that's going to be the determining factor. Uh, the next is when you press play, who's online and available to play? Uh, you may not always have somebody that uh, is directly equivalent. So sometimes you may see some things that are just a little bit outside of your range, and that's based on just who is available to play at the time. And lastly, your internal ranking, that MMR, that's a hidden number uh, that uh, is based on your wins and losses and how you're performing and all of those other areas combined. But uh, that is basically how rank versus MMR works uh, in Marvel Snap. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is, well, I've got all these wonderful cards, Cosmo, uh, but they are a mess, right? Look at all the cards. we got cards, 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 and trying to build a deck can be uh, confusing. Uh, we got this little filter right here uh, that can help a bunch, but what's important to know is that you can, you can uh, play with the filters here to make building decks a little easier. One of the ones that uh, I like to use uh, is the all variants right so if we look at oh i don't know where's angela so if we look at my angela as i'm trying to build decks i don't need to see three versions of my angela right it just it's cluttered so what i can do here is turn off the all variants as we scroll down to miss angela you can see here's angela right here i don't have to see all the variants uh, another cool thing is is when i pull up angela uh, i can set what the default card is that I see when I'm building decks or that's going to be in my deck. Uh, and I can do that with this button right here. I can see all my variants, right? But then I can also say by just clicking, this is the one I want. Uh, the star one will let me know uh, which one is chosen at the moment. This is the one that I happen to want to use. I'm not a big fan of all the pixels, so so I, I, I like to use this one. But that's how you can choose what the default card is. Uh, you can limit the variance and you can begin to sort your collection in ways that you can uh, begin to build those decks, right? Uh, talking about deck building, so one of the cool things that they did was uh, there's a system of adding to the deck, you know, so for on PC, that's two clicks. You can also just long press and it puts it up there. So I'm now down to one click and I don't have to go through all the screens. It works the exact same way on mobile. And to get rid of it out of the deck, you just long press and it gets rid of it as well. While we're talking about building decks, you kind of have to decide how you want to play Marvel Snap, right? We have uh, in just like any other game, you have those min maxers. We're gonna try and squeeze out every bit of performance, every bit of math building capability they can, and they'll do that at the cost of maybe some fun. I like to try and build decks. Uh, I'll try some meta decks, so to speak, as well. 
but uh, I like to see how the combinations are going to work. If you're one of those people that want to find the quote unquote best deck, right? Or whatever the meta deck is at that time. Uh, and you just don't want to be bothered with building your own decks. Uh, what you can do is go to a couple of the support sites out there. Uh, there's a bunch, but the ones that I tend to frequent are uh, snap.fan. It's a really good place to, to visit to find out, you know, upcoming news, some deck help, uh, you know, also deck building. You can also log in and store your decks here because as you know, inside Marvel Snap, there's a limited area of deck storage. And so you may not be able to uh, decide which ones you want to keep, which ones you want to discard. So here's a good place to store your decks. You just copy and paste that information right back into your to your game and now your decks are stored off-site so you have plenty of room in the game. Probably the main site that I visit the most though is um, marvelsnapzone.com. Uh, this is my favorite site for resources. Um, I've used it a bunch. They've got lot, uh, pretty much everything you can expect from news to deck building, deck storage, uh, upcoming cards, theory crafting, all those things that go along with this type of game. Uh, it's all here waiting for you. You can become a member. It doesn't cost anything and you can do all the things that you can do on SnapFan as well. And so those are just a couple of resources that I wanted to share with you uh, so that you might be able to begin to build those decks that you can uh, use to start dominating those ranks. The next thing we need to talk about is uh, upgrade path, missions, resources, things of that nature, right? And so in order to upgrade cards, you need some currency, right? Uh, and so uh, let's see, do I have a blue card here? So here I can go in and upgrade cable to the next level of card uh, and it'll ask, actually boost my collection level. And by boosting my collection level, I then get to uh, access to more cards and so on and so on. Um, the in-game currency, uh, there's two for the upgrade path here. You'll need this one as well as the, the boosters, right? So if I click this um, and then it's gonna upgrade cable for me, obviously, but then I'm gonna lose some of that in-game currency and I have to get that back. Now there's a couple of ways to getting that back. Uh, the primary way that I manage my resources, there's 50 more credits, right, right on. Uh, the way that I manage my resources uh, is through uh, missions primarily. And I focus on making sure I'm completing my missions every day, uh, watching the refill time to make sure that it gets done. I mean, six games a snap goes by in a snap, no pun intended. Uh, but you can also uh, refill two of those by using gold. And right now that's the only thing I'm using gold for in this game and I do not purchase gold. I don't think it's a, a good value for my dollar. But when I do bump into gold throughout my gaming cycle, uh, that's where I'm gonna spend it. I'm gonna spend it on uh, refilling those missions so that I can start to uh, get my resources built. Speaking of value for your dollar, one of the questions that's being asked out there, is the season pass really uh, worth the, the, the cost? So is the season pass really worth it, right? You're talking $9.99 US. So if over a year, that's almost 120 bucks that you're gonna spend on this game if you're buying the season pass. So is it worth it for you? Uh, it's a great game free to play. There's no pay to win right now. So there's not going to be uh, uh, any benefits other than uh, the built-in benefits of the season pass and those are access to uh, the card that is being featured for that season right so for this season it was black panther right so by the season pass you get black panther earlier than everyone else or you can wait and and just get black panther as he comes in through the rotation i like buying the season pass because it, it gives me early access to the featured card so that i can use it in my decks but not only that i can feature that in my content for you guys so you can see uh, uh some ways that the card may interact with uh, the current pool that i'm in and maybe the current pool that you're in Let's uh, jump in and play a game and we'll talk about a few things while we're in there. Uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is initiative. Who gets to flip first and why that's important. To identify who gets to flip first, the nameplate is gonna glow on who gets to go first. And so in this first round, oh, snapping right off the bat, my, my opponent gets to flip first and I have nothing to play, so it's really not gonna impact me right at this round. Uh, but the importance is uh, if I was to play a one cost card there, and if he played Electra and he flipped first on my one cost card, he wouldn't hit anything because he's, there's nothing for him to hit. So it's those type of things that uh, the initiative is going to help you with a bunch here. Um, let's see, let me play this smart. We're going to play Bishop. Uh, yeah, we're going to play Bishop here. 
And what we're gonna learn here is card order is important. There's a perfect example. If he would have flipped Carnage first, then his Bucky, uh, Carnage would not have hit his Bucky, therefore he would have not gotten the, the value for that Carnage. Uh, so we're gonna play our Mysterio. This is a Mysterio deck. And card placement and turn placement, right? I, I played Mysterio after I played Bishop, so Bishop can get the full value of all of these cards. So I'll feature this deck in a, a one of my shorts uh, in, later in the week, but uh, just know that uh, card placement and initiative is important here. I want to put my Bucky out here in Carnage, um, but maybe I made a mistake in the order or something like that. If I just press here, right, on my energy, I can undo all actions and it's gonna call back those cards. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put those out and that's uh, that undo's really convenient for me because I make lots of mistakes and I take up a lot of time when I'm playing. All right, Carnage, do your thing. Yeah, I'm gonna lose this. I, I really don't have anything that I can that I can play that's gonna guarantee me the win, so uh, I'm gonna retreat. So knowing when to snap and when to retreat, that's gonna be key to uh, climbing those ranks and collecting those cubes, right? Uh, it is more valuable to know when to retreat than it is to know when to snap, because that snap is like gambling, right? It's like, it's, it's like playing poker. You just never know what's on the other side of those cards. But knowing when to retreat, uh, knowing what you have in your hand versus what's on the board, Man, I hit that retreat as often as I have to uh, in order to save those cubes so that I can uh, have them to win another day. So thank you guys for watching the video. Hopefully you made it all the way to the end. Hopefully you found some value here. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe, it helps out. Uh, but even more importantly than that, just give me a thumbs up or maybe a comment. Uh, and that really, really helps out the channel a bunch. Remember, you're not invisible, your voice counts. We wanna hear you down in the comments. Thanks again.